to wash the dara. So that somebody can plant plant in such a land. And I told them we should not have lived in such strong things. Because after all, it hurts people to think that somebody who looks like us, thinks like us, has been enticing to plant on such a land. <coughs> I won't say that was a mistake on their part. I wouldn't say that I'm no part. Neither am I saying it is granted. But I would say that it would be manifested. Let us talk to the third person. Would be a better idea to talk about the third person first of all, that it would be manifest. That is we think we can <laughs> That is the only thing that is lacking in the dream is self knowledge. Otherwise, you have sorted everything out. As far as the matter is concerned, you have sorted out. You have gone up to the moon, you have gone up to, I don't know, sun, I will not have done that. But you are using the sun's rays, everything material that is given to you has been sorted out up to the microscopic level. Into the emotional side, you have gone to the other extremes. You have gone into the emotional side to such an extent that sometimes shudder. See how people have ruined themselves completely when they are after emotional experience. Then into rationality, when I see human beings, they have rationally sorted out many things, and in that, you have committed such mistakes. That it is impossible to convince you that they are absolutely false ideas. Because through rationality you cannot reach God, which is a eternal being, you can say, and is an unlimited. You cannot reach an unlimited being by your limited stuff. Anything you do, you cannot. Somebody has to trigger you, or you are to be triggered. So to rationality, you cannot reach that stage where Christ has asked you to reach about which Sri Krishna has described that Atmane Vatpane Krishna. You have to know your Atma. You, you cannot know it by reading about it. Like Shankaracharya has said, the yoga in the By any of these things you cannot. There is Sankhya by yoga. Uh, exercises now that you cannot know only to the grace. Only to the grace of God you can know. And this is one simple thing if we accept within ourselves that I call intentionality of man, that we cannot know by ourselves. Because in the evolution so far, you have done nothing to be human beings. You have become human beings. By yourself. Self. Which self we do not know, which is the Shetra here, as it is called by Sri Krishna, is the one who knows the field where it is working. It works out. But you do not know how it works out. But you know somebody who knows. You are aware of that within your life. But the connection is not being yet established. <laughs> So when we talk of self-realization, rationality plays its own part to a point. Everything that plays its play its own help to bring you to that point where now the time has come for you to do. Even science, if you go to the extreme of science, you find it's not there. No, it's not there. It's finished. It's not there. So it's not there. Even spiritual people, so called, of the, they have done this, they have done that. Have you found it? No. That should be there. If this denial is not there, so has Yoga the this word. No, we haven't found it yet. We agree, Mother. That's the thing. Mr. Rigor, perhaps, is trying to tell you. 
that if you say no, I found it, then you better go ahead. The thing is, it is such a sudden happening. It is such a beautiful happening that you don't feel anything as a pain or anything. But it is a sudden happening. And you will lose the suddenness just like that, like a little delicate flower when you have to handle it. When you are smelling a little flower, you have to be attentive about it as well. But if you start going to the library and finding out how should I enjoy the flower, it's such a great way of looking at it. But it is a very subtle happening and works. I know my job. And my job is very simple. It's a very simple job that a light, which is enlightened, a candle that is enlightened, can enlighten other light. Things. So think about it, forget it. This is my job. And that's my job for which I'm born. I have to live for it. I'm doing it itself to for it. Because we start thinking about looking at yourself, looking why this matter is doing. What can I do? That's my nature. Do you ask the sun why he tries to do it? In the same way, this question to me has no meaning. It's nature. And it has to work out. The time has come. It has worked out now. You see, at least 50 percent, I should say, 60 percent has come. All of you should say. But the other thing I have been interested in. Uh, report that somebody said, no, no, we are not interested in self-realization, we want God. What is self-realization? Instead, you should know what is a self <laughs> This is the rational mind, you can understand. But we do not know it, we do not identify it, we do not actualize it, unless and until this happening takes place within us, for which we are free. Only by talking about it or saying about it, you won't. By reading about it, you won't. By the happening itself only, it happens. Like it's a very simple thing. Suppose you have a story in the stuff. It has to be removed. You have to have the operation. Isn't it? By reading about the soul, by reading about the doctor, by reading about the vaccine, by thinking about it, or by talking about it, or by describing it, will you get it removed? In that case, what happens to our brains, I don't know. We are not so practical about it. We do not understand that if it has to happen, it will happen within us for change. Self, you will to take the name of self is self is God. What is self is the reflection of God within us. God Almighty exists or not is another big lecture. But by rationality, we will not know. This is happening in the world. So forget that. Put your mind to rest a little bit. As they said, yeah, you need to move to rest a little bit more. By like saying, no, not this. That is not this. Let's see, not this. It's a very subtle happening, so I'm taking you down to that point. It is the Reflection of God Almighty into our own. Now we think that reflection can be perfect through our cleansing, through our japa, tapa, and all those things. We can cleanse our being by doing all kinds of Punya, as they call it, by donating things, serving people, doing that. But have you seen anybody getting self-realization by that? You might cleanse. You may cleanse these things. You may cleanse this. But can you get a light inside? You may want cleaning. Will you get a light inside? You have to have connection with the mains. Supposing you get a power, 
by which you can see the thin center. It would be even better to get the power first and then to take. How do we keep clean a glass? Have you seen that? Do practical as I said. Even if you have to clean a glass, you have to put it against the light. Can you clean a glass in darkness? Can you? In the same way, you have to put it against the light. You have to have the light within you. Maybe, maybe it's a blurred light in the beginning. Maybe it's not clear, but then it's light. So those who think that we are going to clean our karma also must know this here. At the most, you can keep in the center. At the most, you can lead a good religious, righteous, holy life. But your karma that were there, have been there in previous lives, you cannot clear. You cannot. By doing anything. Like we can say that this lamp is dirty, we can maintain that much. But if you think you can completely remove its dirt in darkness, you can. You have to have light to see what is dirty. What is the one that is obstructed? That's why light is first to be done. Whatever may be the condition. So this house now, supposing, is granted to me. It's in the worst possible condition in consciousness. First thing I will do is to drop and put a light there. Practical. Without the light, how do I enter it? So first put the light in. Then we enter. What is self-realization is to enlighten that thing within me. Some will be having flickering ones, you know. It will go on. Go on. Okay. Mother has seen one thing. It's a cut. That one point, Mr. Gregor has said, it's cut. But why do I have patience? Because I'm done. You cannot imagine a person who loves. And loves gives you the patience. I mean, to me, I never know that I'm patient as a little bit in other senses. Because I enjoy doing things which really gives you the love. So there is no give and take, no hurting of ego. I'm not doing anything special for you. It's my job. I'm paid for. Because I have the joy of the whole world. By doing this, I'm achieving the greatest of things myself. It's the joy that you can see the light. We cannot in this modern time. When everybody becomes new utility and benevolent, understand a person who does something for that reform. Now, one thing is so that this happening of self realization has been described in all the scriptures, which are real scriptures, say Sita, say Quran, say Bible. All of them have described it in their own style and own way. But amounting to the same, once you get it, you will be surprised the same way to everybody, is it? And what are you fighting about? It's all the time. Everywhere the same life, same thing has been described and it's just the same time. It's not happening to you that once you get this life, you get the collective point. Means you start seeing the other person's problem and your own problem. It's very simple, like the light when it comes, it does two things. It sees its own face and also shows others what is behind it. It automatically happens. Now, what do you do about it? Nothing you like it. It is built in, in the character, in the swabhava, as they call it, and in the nature of life to do. In the same way, it is built in. In the Atma, in the spirit. It just does. Once it starts manifesting its powers, you become collective with one. So, what am I doing here? Is this that I'm just reporting to you how you must do your stuff. For example, as the Lord has said, the wind starts flowing, which is being described by a complete book by Adi Shankaracharya. 
that the cool brings dark souls of the hand. Known as Chaitanya Lodi Tar Soul. Christ has described it when somebody does things that something went from my body into another. All these things have been described. In the Bible it is described, the Kudali himself is described as I many, many words, but one of them is very important, is that I will appear before you like that of me. All these things have been described and told you and to the modern times that you are born today, when you cannot say these things are not due to. But we keep them aside. In religion also, we take to new ideas, new things. But in matter, we take to anti. Religion should be realizing why the matter should be modern. Just the opposite will move. We take religion that is coming up modern. Now today, Mataji has some less power. It's a guru shopping over. So, from Mataji to another one, they go. So, they have another of guru. Now, this is the latest guru has come in the market, okay? I tell you, he's a very good one. No, that's not the judgment point. The judgment point is what power have you got yourself? Are you still a beggar? Have you been in this yourself? What has your guru given? What has he done for you? He has been enslaving you or he has given you freedom? Has he given you your power inside? That is the judgment point. Do not get identified with any one of them, with any one of these ideas that should keep you down. Try to identify with yourself. Yourself is your guru. I'm not your guru. I'm your mother. You know how to draw terrible people. I'm not that. I'm just your mother. But what to tell you, as a mother would tell you, that your guru is sitting in your heart. It's the self. It tells you. Listen to yourself. And you can only listen to yourself when you get your realization, when you start receiving information and you have a report. When there is a communication is and when you can talk to yourself, then only you are entitled. Before that, you religion is not known. I mean, yeah. It's complete non-knowledge. The rest of it is all in this world, which you can find. I mean, by raising churches, by raising temples, by raising all these things, you cannot find God. Temple is in here. In your own heart, yourself, only the light has to be put. Jai Shumatsuji, everyone. Jai Shumatsuji, um, thank you so much for this lovely speech. And uh, thank you, Uncle Bala, for joining us this evening uh, to talk about your enlightenment, uh, where you got the light from Shumatsuji. Um, it'd be nice to see the photographs and uh, to hear an account from your diaries, which Shumatsuji um, had has asked the yogis to do for future references. It'd be great pleasure if you could start. First of all, thank you for joining us. And if you could tell us how it all began again with the photographs, please. I don't know what I can say after listening to the voice of the infinite. It's like some amoeba trying to say something, but... Um, yeah, give me a moment. That was very good meditation. Um, well, actually, in the last uh, uh, memories video we did, I, I did describe some. Um, and I thought what I'd do this time is um, 
I took some photographs, initially not many, but I thought I'd show you where I came from, just the year that I had uh, that special experience uh, in uh, in 76 on uh, Sahasrara Day. Uh, so I guess I should share share the screen maybe. Uh, yes, please do. Uh, it'd be lovely uh, to see uh, those times. Um, ah. Do you see it yet or? Not quite. Okay. Yes. And if you All go right. full screen, that would be awesome. All right, let me do that. Um, get the reading glasses on. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is... Um, this is 1976. Actually, it's the year that I had that experience where Mother said she gave me realization by remote control. And when she came to visit me in the late 70s, uh, she said she liked this photograph of me when I was a young man on the left. <laughs> it was winter, of course, in England. And as you know, I did aeronautical engineering. So that's me on one of the aircraft at the university. Uh, which for the old uh, fans of aircraft, and mm -hmm. this is uh, a Hawker Hunter, uh -huh. uh, which was what they call a transonic uh, a jet, uh, which means it was flying uh, just below the speed of sound. Actually, it would sometimes go a little faster, uh -huh. but it wasn't designed for uh, supersonic travel. This, of course, was you know in the mid '70s. Uh, so that that was the year that I had that experience, which I described in the in the other talk. And uh, this is 1978. So I met Mother the following year in 77, and this is 78 when um, uh, we had a puja. This was, of course, after my experience, mm -hmm. um, which was also described previously. And I just like to show you some of the people that. Uh, yogis may not recognize. That's, of course, me in the corner here. Yes. After a severe haircut compared to the last photograph. I just didn't cut my hair when I went to college. Right. Seemed unnecessary. Uh, and this is uh, young Gregoire here. Is he wearing cordial in his eyes? It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, he had to put that in. You know, it was supposed to be treatment for your uh, hair and things wow. like that. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And, and, of course, you see Mother smiling away. And this chap here on the top right uh, was a Brahmin who Mother used to call uh, to do uh, to recite the stuff for the pujas. Oh. So we had no clue what he was doing, but he said some stuff. And then uh, we basically just washed Mother's feet. Also, in the old days, uh, just in the early years, uh, you know, the pujas were not for a particular deity because uh, everything was re represented in this incarnation. So he simply did a puja to the Adi Shakti and we were just calling Mother or Mataji. And uh, on the left here, you might recognize this fellow. This is a young Jamel, uh, wow. Jamel Maturi, who is now not so young, just like me. And some of the others are, you know, the others are not, not in Sahaj. They kind of appeared and Mother invited them for a puja and then disappeared. Uh, this is us actually washing the feet. And this is a person, some may, that's the, uh, the Brahmin again. Mm -hmm. He wasn't fully involved, but he was a very nice man. Well, he was uh, probably saying the mantras uh, in, in the proper he, yeah, he was chanting away and... Uh, and mother would tell him what to say, and he seemed to know them all by heart. Uh -huh. And we just did the fun part, which was, uh, that's uh, me in the bottom left. Uh, we were just washing mother's feet. And this person, uh, older yogis will know, he's Dr. Rustam, when he had just arrived uh -huh. uh, inside yoga. 
And it was interesting with Rustam, I'll tell you a little story. I was staying with mother, as I mentioned, just about every weekend. And one day she said to me, oh, she said, there's a psychiatrist coming. Mm -hmm. uh, will you talk to him downstairs before he comes up? Yeah. Uh, so um, I went and saw him and, you know, he, he was dressed rather differently. He looked quite dapper in a white suit and white shoes. Never seen anything like that. And he was trying to explain to me, you know, what, what brought him to Sahaj and so on. Yeah. Of course, he'd seen the ads, but he'd also had dreams. And um, he was quite a smart guy. He had, uh, I, think, I believe, a medical degree and also a, a doctorate in psychiatry uh, from Oxford and Cambridge. So he'd been to both of those. Uh, Did psychiatry both at Oxford and at Cambridge? Yeah, so say that again. So he he got his degrees from Oxford. One from Oxford and one from Cambridge. Yes, he was a smart he was a smart cookie. Right. And, uh, yeah, I explained a little bit about Sarge to him, and then he went upstairs and showed uh, uh, the paintings. You know, Jung used to suggest uh, the like the famous Jung, Carl Jung, used to mm -hmm. suggest drawing your dreams so he had all these uh rather interesting dreams i'll leave it at that um here's the same uh puja and mothers laughing about something the pujas were were more like fun They're, they I, i'm not too sure how to describe it you you felt great and of course you were being cleared out and mother was uh most of the time laughing and talking um you know whereas later years it was uh she appeared to go into a deep meditation. So anyway, after, after the experience in 1978, uh, as you know, I started having programs because I wanted to share it with everybody. I was so excited. You know, the early yogis will tell you, you just wanted to jump on the rooftop and say, wow, you know, come and experience this. So I started meetings in Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which is where I was living. And, um, we built up a very nice collective, starting with meetings in my flat, as I've mentioned before, and then uh, uh, going on to uh, the Friends Meeting House in the city centre. Yeah. And these are some of the um, yogis from Birmingham and Derby. Um, if anyone doesn't recognise me, that's what? me. <laughs> that's a very, <laughs> very different year. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's like a boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is uh, the first yogi in England. Is this, that Tony? Oh, this, yeah, that's Tony, young Tony. Yeah, we were we were good buddies. Basically, Gregoire, Tony, I, and Jamel were very close. In fact, uh, Gregoire was traveling and didn't quite live in London full time then in the mm. uh, 70s. So Tony, Jamal, and I, Mother used to call us the three musketeers because we'd be at meetings making fun of, in the uh -huh. back, you know, in the back, laughing about the new people, the strange new people who would come <laughs> to the meetings. Right. And, um, yeah, we had a lot of fun, really. And this person I wanted to point out, uh, yes. he, this person is, uh, Peter. is uh, Peter Phelps, who was, yes. a, uh, who, he was an electrical engineer, uh -huh. at Lucas Electronics. And this person in particular is mentioned in the Guru Puja talk that Mother gave in uh, 1978, right. where she talks about a person coming from uh, the Birmingham meeting mm -hmm. uh, who had learned how to surrender. Mother had said, you know, we'd be more useful uh, because we can surrender and she, as gurus, because we can surrender and she can't because obviously there's nobody to surrender to, yes. to put it in uh, human terms. Uh, so she mentioned this person called Philip. And uh, Philip had, uh, had come to the ad that I put in early 78, I think it was in April. Um, and he had been seeking for years in India. I think I may have mentioned he, he had two pages. Mother made him write down every guru's name. And he had two pages of guru's names, which he showed mother. And of course, mm -hmm. eventually you're supposed to burn it. And he came and he had a powerful experience. So I think I mentioned, I said, park them on a chair, these seven uh, seekers, and just work on them. Nothing was said. There was a photo on the table. 
as I said, paper clip of mm. a black and white photo leaning mm. against the wall, a candle. I just asked them to sit down, to take their shoes off, sit down. And I just worked on their chakras. And he had such a powerful experience when it was over, he pushed his chair back. And this elderly gentleman, who even yeah. then was in his 50s, prostrated completely on the floor before the photograph. Then he jumped up, reached into his pocket and pulled out a wad of 10 pound notes. And in 1978, 10 pounds bought quite a few things and was offering money before which, after which he asked me, where is she? I have to go see her. And he went down to London. And uh, that's what Mother mentions in the Guru Puja talk that he just began absorbing her vibrations because all those false gurus had damaged him a lot. Uh -huh. So if you listen to that talk. Uh, That's Guru Puja 1978. Yeah, 1978 in England. In England, okay. yeah. And he, he he had a great, you can see what he's trying to do, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Making fun. But he was it's a very, very jovial joyful guy. photo, everyone. Yeah, a very jovial guy, lots of fun. And uh, nice to be around. Now, now I'm jumping to Tamil. So this was 78. Right. Then in 1979, um, oh, I should just mention these two. This, yes. this, uh, this is Barry. Uh, he and his wife Rachel stayed in Derby Ashram, and uh, he came to Rolls Royce. He was a physics graduate, and he came to Rolls Royce to work in my department. And he was sitting on a chair across from me, and we used to chat a lot. And I felt, wow, this guy is really one of those real hardcore seekers. So I used to work on him under the table, under the desk. And one day he said to me, he said, um, I start, he said, I'm, I'm feeling really weird in my stomach. He said, like I'm all nauseous and feeling sick. And I noticed, he said, your hands are not on your desk, they're underneath. <laughs> he caught you out. <laughs> he caught me out. It. So I then told him what I was doing and I can tell he jumped into it. He jumped uh -huh. into it, uh -huh. and he brought his wife into it, uh, Rachel. And um, so they both got very involved, and they moved into Dalby Ashram. And I should tell you one of the um, <laughs> consequences of that was her father mm -hmm. was one of the directors at Rolls-Royce uh, Aero Engines. And he lived, he, his office was in Mahogany, uh, in the Mahogany area, which was one floor below us, below the research group. Mm -hmm. uh, with the walls were all mahogany and these guys were given company jaguars and things like that right so he noticed his daughter was um staying in an ashram uh -huh. so he obviously decided that needed to be taken care of and i knew nothing about him knowing or what he had done but when mother finally told me to leave rolls royce and go go to america uh -huh. um, i was called in for an exit interview and um the HR manager said, do you, he, he goes through the records and he says, oh, do you know you are listed as belonging to a cult? And I said, what? Because oh. I didn't mention the Sahaj to the people at work, except to young Barry there. Yes. You know, so they had all these records. And uh, I, I later asked my manager to show me some of it. And I was shocked. It basically investigated the whole thing. Uh, probably because I was in the um, uh, commercial division, so it wasn't too serious. But because they also work on military aircraft, they have to make sure that you're not uh, oh. a security risk. So that's the first time I knew about uh, such things going on. But that didn't stop either of them from being uh, you know, fully involved in Saji Yoga. So this was my first visit to my house in Tamworth, where I was still doing the Birmingham meetings. Uh -huh. and, uh, you can see her, her in our back garden. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, working on the TM people. So this was the TM breakthrough. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the first video. Mother used to come. She had come before that to Birmingham as well. I just don't have photos of that, um, you know, in late 78. And again, mm -hmm. so um, she... She came to, to, to the meeting in, in Birmingham, and then we came back to Tamworth uh, and stayed in the house. 
And at the Birmingham meeting, it was very challenging for the yogis because the TMS, as you probably know, those from Transcendental Meditation, yes. were very caught up, very caught up. And, um, you know, most yogis know now, so it's okay, I guess, to put it on the video. But some were jumping around, some were barking like dogs, some were leaping and screaming. And um, it frightened the regular seekers. And it also frightened a lot of the newer Saj yogis mm -hmm. who were coming to our meetings. And we were completely worn out. It ran late. Mother was working nonstop on them. And right at the end, um, you know, the, the person came, the guy in charge of the room came and told us, you, you've got to leave. You know, you're supposed to leave half an hour ago. So as we were walking out with great relief around 10.30 at night, I thought, wow, you know, I can go back to the house with mother and clear out. And then suddenly at the door, as we are walking out, mother turns around and tells all these TM people, come to Bala's house. Wow. And my heart just fell. And I looked at Tony and he was like, you know, <laughs> so, he was horror struck. <laughs> I went back to the house and um, uh, mother worked on them till about 3 a.m. All right. So this is the next day in the back garden. Many of them are sitting on the on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mother's working on them. And uh, this chap at the back, I'll mention him. You, you mm. can see this person here. Yes. Uh, he's the one mother me to uh, talks about in some of her tapes that she had a very sick... Uh, yogi come and stay in a house and she had told him how to clear out with camphor and different things and she worked on him every day and um <laughs> he appeared, when she went into the room one day she found that the, all the walls and the ceiling were black with camphor oh gosh <laughs> carbon from <laughs> camphor so this this will give you whoever listens to that talk will be able to connect it a little uh this is one of the ladies who stayed in the ashram, uh, Beverly, and these are some of the uh, local yogis uh, from Birmingham as well. Mm -hmm. And this is in the back, and again, you never know what's happening. This is actually a yogi who Mother said well, had got caught up from the TMS, you know, clearing out the TMS, so she's working on him. Uh, oh, that's my biological mother there. Yeah. Who was, uh, was staying in uh, Tamworth at the time. Right. Uh, this is one of, yeah. Uh, yeah, she, uh, I think she'd met mother the previous year at one of the, at one of the meetings. Uh, she's the one who, when, when I invited her to the meeting, those were the early days in 78 when the yogis would still sit on the stage and uh, she came and sat down and uh, I, I hope no one will feel upset, but she said, why do you want to be with all these strange looking people? You know, she just couldn't comprehend it until she met mother, of course, which was a completely different uh, change. Yes. And, and this lady on the left is uh, Christine, one of the first uh, uh, six yoginis uh, in England. All right. Christine, yeah. from Birmingham? No, no, she is uh, from London. One of the first uh, hippies that mother talked about. Uh -huh. um, you know, the, the really old yogis. So when I came there, I think about seven or eight, and including these uh, these six, uh, you know, the original core who had come yes. to in the mid-70s, I think, 76 mm -hmm. maybe. 75, 76. Yeah, 75, 76. And this is in the house where mother is working on everyone. Uh, TM is, this is one of the directors of TM, so the way they organized it, they had four directors, one for England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. And two of the directors came. One was uh, Linda's former husband, and one was this chap here. Uh -huh. he, didn't last, uh, he didn't last very long. And uh, although Mother was working in them, at times she talked about the seriousness, but she also uh, laughed a lot uh, you know, throughout. You know how Mother was and is. Uh, yeah. This is the same time. Um, I actually cooked rice for mother, by the way. And uh, Did you cook rice? You mean pulao? Uh, yes, yes. I was going to cook the whole meal, but one of the yoginis who came uh -huh. uh, insisted that she had to do the cooking. You know, I was I learned to cook from my Malaysian friends once I was in boarding school. Right. Um, 
And I'll tell you a little bit about the furniture. So I had no furniture, right? I yeah. I had come believing that you should not have anything. You should just meditate. Yes. So I had a, I had a mattress. I did buy a mattress. Right. I kept it downstairs in the morning and sat and meditated on it. Then I carried it to my bedroom upstairs and slept on it. And then mother said she was going to come to my house. And I was like, what? You know, <laughs> so I knew I had to buy, I had to buy furniture because she, she, she needed Absolutely. that. And then I, I knew I needed curtains and stuff, which I didn't have. So I was telling my boss, I, I just said, oh, you know, my mother's coming. I need furniture. So my boss sent his wife. I mean, this is amazing. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm working for somebody and, and he sent his wife to to get to measure and get me curtains. Oh, of course, I paid for them. So they helped me with the curtains. And then the furniture happened in a typical Sahaj way. Uh, we I was driving one evening with one of the employees at the company that I worked in. And uh, the car broke down in the it was uh, it was dark already and the car broke down. And someone came by to give us a jump start. Mm -hmm. And we were saying, oh, you know, we are on the way to this fun, to, to a furniture store. And the person in the car said, oh, you don't want to go there. It's very expensive. Here's a place where furniture, brand new furniture yeah. that people don't like or have ordered but don't like has been returned. So we actually went there and got a whole set of furniture for mother. So mother is sitting on one of those. Amazing those chairs and I still have two of them I mean I couldn't get rid of them they're completely worn oh, no. out how could you yes and uh, they uh, you know they they are just I'm very fond of them to put it mildly and even that cloth at the back yes um, I was you know we were told mother only like natural stuff and hmm. someone said well, we need a shawl uh, these were the days of minimal minimalism yeah and so I rushed around looking for pure wool and I struggled and eventually found this pure wool shawl, which I <laughs> draped on the chair for mother. Um, okay. And, and here is uh, the same Christine you saw in the backyard. Yes. And let me ask you, do you know who this uh, lady is? Is that Hester? That's Hester, young Hester. She looks so much like Shredevi, her daughter. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, Hester was a lot of fun, I can tell you that. Very smart lady, good sense of humor, and we had lots of fun. I just fun remember her. briefly meeting her when Sri Mataji um, visited the um, apartments in two, September 2003. Right. Uh, when she uh, gave Vinay his name. Um, that's when I had met her, just very briefly. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But... Um, this is the stay when Shumasri stayed in, in the Darby Ashram for a week, is it? Well, this this is actually my house in Tamworth. Oh, so it's she your stayed house. there for a few days, just less than a week, but for several uh -huh. days. Uh, and tell us came... about the rice you cooked for her, please. <laughs> What's there to tell? I mean, was, what was the was recipe, like, for example? Basmati, I, oh, no, I'm too embarrassed. But I learned how to cook from my Malaysian friends. So when I came to boarding school... Yeah. Uh, I was, you know, as you know, most of us don't know how to do anything. And my friends from Malaysia just came over and took me under, uh, well, you know, students from Malaysia took me under their wing and cooked some food for me and eventually showed me how to make a few uh, yeah. simple dishes. So, so that was uh, that. Was that. And uh, mother kept going into deep meditation and this was the following day after the TMS had, had gone. And she'd just go into this deep state of meditation all of a sudden. Yes. And you'd have no idea uh, what was going on. But I should tell you a funny story. Um, yes, uh, I'll go back uh, to this one. Uh, so when she was working on the TMS, uh, uh, and they stayed overnight, so there were about 32 people crowded in this tiny little house in Tamworth near Birmingham. Uh -huh. And um, so the next morning, one of them, I mean, many of them were possessed, of course, as mother was kept telling us, hmm. one of them was sitting on the stairs and sobbing away. And um, this, uh, so there was this uh, yogini um, 
originally from Greece, who was right. standing on the steps and going, um, doing these hand movements mother used to use to clear people out and saying, in the name of Sri Mahashi Nirmala Devi, I order you to leave this woman yes. or something like that. Yes. <laughs> Ordering the, the Buddha, and the woman would just cry louder and louder. Right. So, um, my mom, who is here, yes, she was in the bedroom upstairs, and uh, she came down the stairs and she saw this grown woman sobbing away. Right. And she asks her, she said, uh, would you like a cup of tea? And the woman stopped crying. And she said, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a very special photo. I'm glad you're sharing it again because the, 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 the tender expression on your biological mother's face, the way she's looking at you, and your hair for some reason appears shorter than it does in other photographs. Yes, yes. I, I... Joy on your face and how you're all absorbing the vibrations from Shamatsuji and the, and the pure fun and frolic that yeah, yeah, Shamatsuji yeah, and... just personifies. Yeah, and, and you know the magic of what she does because this guy whom she's working on, the TM director next to her, yeah. You would have recognized him. I mean, if you saw him on a on a street, you'd cross to the other side before when he first came to. Mm. And overnight, you know, he's completely changed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so yes, yeah, so mother was and, and then after obviously she was working on us because after that she would uh, and you can still see my shawl behind her. Yes. And after that she would uh, just do namaste to everybody. And uh, anyway, let's go on. So, oh yeah, the house was up for sale because I was going to move to to Derby, to Derby Ashram, or right. to buy to buy the ashram. So here, mother is coming out before going somewhere, and this house was across from a children's playground. And mother just instead of getting in the car and going on, she walked across to the playground and started talking to these lucky children. Amazing. You know, the shawl she's wearing is, it reminds me of my own biological mother. She has the same shawl. Oh, same wow. Color. It's just so beautiful to see the Adi Shakti in that. It's <laughs> like, wow. Yes, please um, tell us more about this incident. Well, here, here the, the person who was taking mother to the station was anxious um, to get going, and mother totally ignored him as she normally does. And yeah was just chatting the kids and asking them, you can see she asked them to feel vibrations. Yes. See the one on the uh, left. Or, yeah. Quite a few more and then their mums took them away. <laughs> <laughs> In a tablet, 1978, a tiny little village town. Yeah. Town, you know, a bit of a distance from Birmingham. Um, Amazing. But yeah, we must have been a bit strange, those of us, you know, especially when the neighbours saw that there were 30 mm. plus people squeezed in the house. Uh, a yogi called Bill Hansel had to sleep in the garage and things like that. All right. But, um, yeah. Amazing. So this was Guru Puja, 1978. And um, I it's think I mentioned... 1980 there, sorry. 1980, 1980. And uh, I think I told you in the, in the 70s, um, some of us got the... The for good fortune to help mother when she was getting ready for the puja. Yeah, I think she was putting, uh, she was decorating herself. Uh -huh. Oh, here, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. You can see that mirror, and um, and we were still a small group uh, in uh, 1980. You know, the shawl that Shramataji has on the side is actually a Himachali shawl. Ah, and. Uh, is that is that then, if I could ask, is that a, again another sofa that you then bought for the ashram for Shramataji or? No, yeah, this one is now a different location. Okay. So, have, so this is the farewell to Tamworth. We've left. Yeah. And uh, this is at the Guru Puja, at a different location. I can't remember where. Is it in London, probably? Yeah, yeah, in London. Uh -huh. Yes, in London. Uh -huh. So this is still in London, and this is. At the end of the puja, mother was. Uh, soon after, I stopped taking 
photos at pujas because uh, we mother sort of a lot of people are rushing in front and clicking. Mm. So for some years she suggested just one person do it, and there was a person who who was good at it, and uh, a lot of his photographs are in the collective collection. I think I, I know, not think. Uh, so oh this oh I'm not sure why that's there, but okay. So I also went with mother to Toronto. She wanted me to go mm -hmm. uh, with her to do some programs. And is this 1980? No, this is now 82. Actually, I was talking to the Toronto. The lady in Toronto is doing uh, uh, 83. She thinks I'm not too sure. Yeah, I couldn't get a date for it, but I can always check with her. Okay. Uh, so I'd arrived in the car with mother, and uh, this was, uh, we're actually talking with the yogi, so I'm holding the mic, obviously, and we're talking, but uh, I was sort of, uh, I went again in 90, in the early 90s after coming to America, uh -huh. and there, uh, there were 600 people in Toronto in the hall. Amazing. And mother decided not to turn up on time, so I got a message to do, to do the program, uh, which was quite interesting. And then much later, after, you know, people had had uh, been there for about an hour or 45 minutes to an hour, mother came and, uh, of course, again, worked on each person mm -hmm. individually. Amazing. So yeah. she'd sent me, um, uh, she'd sent me to, to Canada later on in 80, in 85, uh -huh. uh, and I started meetings in Montreal, and then after that, I got sent to, to America. Uh, here's a uh, Havan in uh, Cheltenham. Yes. Uh, actually, like a long weekend seminar. We used to rent a lot of uh, nice places and uh, have programs, a lot of beautiful houses, you know. Um, yes those grand houses that the wealthy used to have in the old days and now yeah. they try and keep them going by renting them out and here again uh, you can see some of the yogis i mean you know this chap this is uh i think that might be bill hansel i would have he was one yeah. of the yogis from england from the early days who i like said he was very innocent she said when he yes. when he came and he was an older gentleman he was older than us Yes. And very active, very loving. And, um, you know, when he first came, uh, a, a, couple, a year or two after I'd started meetings, uh, he, he, he still remembers, he told me, he reminded me, he said, you know, he said, Bala, he came up to me and said, you're the first ordinary person we have got in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody else, you know, had long hair and yes. had been through the mill and he he led a very, uh, a very uh, healthy life. Yes. That's where I have to point this person out because he's, he's not visible in the collective. That is a guy called Paul Winter, whom we have to thank for all the digital videos that we have done. I've heard um, about him, yes. Yeah, so met, him, yeah. yeah no, even recently, I mean, as recently as last week, you know, one yogi was saying, oh, you know, he was a difficult guy to get on with and so on, which I do agree with, <laughs> but um, he's the one who digitized it because when I first came, I was shocked at uh, it, how poor the recordings of mother was. Uh -huh. So I, I bought some equipment and so on. And, uh, uh, but when, when he, uh, that was analog though, but when he came, yes. so I used to make the copies for yogis at one time. Yes, you bought that uh, sound yeah, record, yeah, tape and, recorder. Uh, yeah, and and uh, and actually, Paul helped with uh, with a bunch of the uh, copying machines as well. Mm -hmm. um, and he he digitized everything and uh, got the cameras and and whatnot. So uh, so most of the good quality videos we see, yeah, are thanks to his initiation. So we all have our role, regard regardless of some of the temperaments we may have <laughs> yes apparently i mean there was a session where shramataji was giving boons to all the yogis and he had also asked for a boon and he has got it um i can't remember the boon though i remember oh, someone oh, well, i'll tell you what 
what happened was uh, he was quite uh, unorthodox. I thought, you know, I was not quite in mainstream, but he definitely showed me I was okay. Um, he would he refused to give a flower. We we all would give a mother a flower when we could. So what he did was, and he told me this himself. Uh, we were quite friendly. He actually we were very friendly. So he um, he told me that he gave mother a a I see it was a little integrated circuit that he, was encapsulated in plastic, and he offered her that as a gift instead of a flower when it was time to offer flowers. And he told me that mother gave it back to him. And after that, he said, he had this idea to start a business related to that. And I believe he was the first uh, millionaire we had in Sahaj, or very wealthy heir. What did he offer to Shramataji? I couldn't quite get uh, that. It's an, integ an integrated circuit, which um, I don't even oh, know. Oh, I see. see okay. yeah, okay. So it's like... Um, it looks like a little black plastic thing with uh, connectors coming off it. All right. I see from the old days. Nowadays, it's all, you know, done on the board itself. Yes. In the oh. old days, like when I worked at Lucas, you know, we'd buy silicon yes. chips and they'd be cut up. They call them dyes and then, mm. you know, pump them and then they'd be connecting wires and they'd be soldered onto yeah, a yeah. circuit board and stuff like that. So he got his, he's got his uh, ideas from there. Amazing. Yep, so that was, I guess, the boon. Yes. Yes. And there's, is that one of the Bevan brothers there, Mark Bevan? And uh, which the one? Blue shirt. Uh, the, the Bevan boys. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The Bevan lads, the Bevan boys were there. Yes, yes. So then the Brighton, Brighton Collective must have started by then 1981, 82, you would think. Yes, yes. Because in 79, we got the TMers. Yes. Who, uh, you know, quite a few of them were rather bossy. Yeah. And then we got the Brighton hippies who came and um, balanced it out. So we were back to a balanced state again. Right. And so they came and they were a breath of fresh, fresh air. Yes. Um, and uh, lots of fun people uh, came with their, you know, mm. uh, love grass in their hand and flowers in their hair and so on. Oh, and this I thought I'd just put in there. That's mother being the mother. Oh. Uh, so that's her youngest grandchild drinking milk out of a bottle. So she was being a grandma. Oh. On the other side of mother is that baby's older sister, another grandchild. And mother is put, working on something at this, you know, the multitasking. Yes. Uh, oh. Working on some caught up yogis in front of her as well. Amazing. Uh, so it was another time when I was staying uh, with her, uh, so I was able to get the camera out. And These take... are very um, rare photographs, I have to say. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I just thought there were, so many, there were so many photos out there. Yeah. You know, I've got hundreds of them. I mean, I just many are just in boxes. And these were actually in albums, which uh, I had just hastily put together. Some of them are not in chronological order. Uh, but Rajni, my uh, better half, uh, has promised to help me over the next few months. Now that, thanks to you actually, I went through these albums which uh, had gathered dust. You're uh, very kind, uh, Uncle. Listen, it's all thanks to Srimatji, I haven't done anything. But yes, we look forward to uh, having um, Auntie as well uh, with us some point. Oh yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to visit our uh, our birth, my birthplace, uh, England. Ah. Which is where, you know, the spiritual birth is all that counts. That's it. But <laughs> <laughs> really, it just feels like home because all the memories of mother are yeah. there. All the, Amazing. the spiritual oh, families there. Most of them. So whereabouts is this? This is mother arriving in Darby Ashram, the first All time. Right. So that's my little Volkswagen Polo, tiny little thing on the street. Yeah. It's a lovely garden. Just, yeah, mother is just coming in, and mm. someone took this from the front door. I wasn't so she's just scared. entering the Darby Ashram. We had a very long front yard um, and a very long backyard as well. It, it had two addresses. The front one was Utoxeter New Road, number 79. 
And at the back was a street called Drury Lane. So and later on, uh, many um, jobless yogis moved in to stay, and some of them will tell, will tell you who they were. I won't mention them. They used to use the rear address as their address for the dole. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> they couldn't use the front one because it was registered to an engineer. They might have got <laughs> caught. They thought they might have got caught. I don't know if, if they were. Right, there. okay. But they were being cautious. Um, so here, here is, is inside Darby Ashram in the front entrance hall. It was an old house. It was listed. It had, you know, some old slate roof and flooring built in the 1800s. One of the few we could find that had five bedrooms and several bathrooms. Mm. Uh, mother wanted that for an ashram. And um, can you guess, Mother is on the phone. Can you guess who Mother is talking to? So CP? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, uh, wow. Mama just, uh, and you know, she had to talk to him for ages every day. This is where she decided to stay for a week. All because right. As I mentioned, she, she came and said, oh, this is my home. And Amazing. so from here we drove Mother everywhere, although we felt, you know, that was not good to, to drive long distances, at least the organize, the leaders did. But um, And she's sitting there, and I'm, I, I will share this, telling him about where his meals had been put in the fridge. Wow. So she, had, had, she had to cook for him. I mean, they had, they had a, a, a maid or a cook as well, but she had to prepare it all, leave it for him so that he would have mother's you know, hand-touched meals available while she was away on tour. And of course, you know, all other things as well had to be sorted out because it, it is, of course, tough, I'm sure, for yogis who are, you know, married to someone who is not in Saj Yoga. Yes. But Mother spent a, a good period of time every day uh, talking to Sir CP. I, I should say he was very supportive of her yes. work in Saj Yoga. I saw how much he... He gave and uh, you know in the early days, uh, and this oh. is upstairs. Uh, this oh, is in wow. my so this is my bedroom. Um, uh, that little thing in the corner yes. is my altar, which I was told off by uh, one of the older yogis uh, that it wasn't proper and that I hadn't cleaned it thoroughly. But when he sat down before it, he did say. It had great vibration, so mother must have been very uh, forgiving. Um, I didn't know you had to do all this ritualistic stuff with an altar. It was an old, you know, cardboard box covered with a nice cloth. Uh, prior to that, it didn't even have that uh, nice cloth. <laughs> so confession time. So mother is lying on the bed, um, and uh, she's looking at the invitation that we had sent her uh, to come to Birmingham and. Uh, you know, the surrounding areas. Uh, it was sent on a card. Uh, this must have been a, another living room in the house because downstairs there were mm -hmm. two living areas. One we used as a dining room. It also had a dining kitchen. Mm -hmm. And this, with the fireplace, we think it might have been in a third place or maybe it was a bedroom, I'm not sure. Um, so Amazing that photo is, of Sri Mataji there. Yeah, and that yeah. cardboard box also takes me back to way back, actually, when I, um, my brother and I, we lived in Delhi, um, in, in Patpur Ganj, Kalash Apartments of all places, uh, it was called. And, and yeah, because we just moved in, we had a big cardboard box and a very nice photo, big photo of Sri Mataji that we put on the altar with a very nice fabric. It works. You can, you can have it anywhere. I remember one yogi had a secret uh, place in London in the woods uh -huh. where he kept a photograph, candle, and matches uh, wow. hidden in the nook of a tree. Amazing. And, and it was fantastic. I mean, basically, you know, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it um, anywhere, as, as we all know now. <laughs> um, so this is a bit closer. Wow. of mother looking at it. And actually the invitation had been written on the back of a postcard uh, which had a painting by Blake. Oh. I, I don't know if, if uh, maybe many people or most do know about, you know, some of Blake's paintings and the one about uh, 
you know, what hell in Virgil's uh, yes. travels, yeah. My, my. So here, Mother is talking about the photograph and explaining um, certain things uh, in the painting. Have you written it down in your diary that you can share with us, please? Yes, actually, it it tells you the truth, which is, as you probably know, Blake uh, thought the church was too dominating. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, actually didn't allow people to feel the joy, which is, I, I, I'm, of course, paraphrasing. And Mother was saying that, you know, they're showing, he's showing um, hell, mm -hmm. but at the same time, that hell is... Is just an illusion. It was used by the churches to to control people because of the fear of hell. Mm -hmm. And even though it may be in a lot of writings, in absolute terms, and I think I mentioned this ab uh, about the the spiritual enlightenment I had uh, in the previous video, and also in the poem by Kabir, mm -hmm. that it's just made up stuff. And it's a way to control that, you know, you don't know where you'll go and yeah. what they'll be. And um, I mean, a lot of it, you know, you were not supposed to voice, uh, not sorry, you were not, but probably wasn't voiced because it was convenient to keep that illusion going yes. uh, so that people would behave at least out of fear, mm. if not out of an inner transformation. It's like speeding, right? You speed, yeah. <laughs> you enjoy driving fast, but it probably, yes. the thought of a ticket slows you down. <laughs> so here, here is uh, the invitation, oh. both sides of the card. So um, well, nothing very not fancy. Where Shumatji was there then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was in Knightsbridge. She'd already moved from Ashley Gardens by then. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we first visited her in Ashley Gardens where mother would look from the window and say it was next to the cathedral and she'd say, Oh, you know, you can see the boots uh flying out from there at night and then they go about and do their business in London and then they fly back before daylight. Wow. <laughs> yeah, scary stuff. <laughs> Uh, it's so nice to see a handwritten postcard as well, you know, addressed to Shima, yeah, Gina, yeah, Rolanda, yeah. and David. Um, and some years ago, quite a few years ago now, um, we stood outside Brompton Square House of Shumataji and the vibrations were just so amazing. Oh, yeah. This is, it, you know, bearing in mind so many different people have lived in it yes, since. Yes. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's nothing to do with that yoga at the moment, but yeah, that's it's just beautiful. So this is mother having a morning cup of tea. I just thought you said some, you know, homely things. Or yeah, it was just fun because I I was very fortunate to you know spend a lot of time alone with her, and it it's tell us some really... of the some of the well chats. Sorry, the what? Chats, discussions, conversations. Oh, so, all right. So when I was with mother, all I wanted to know, different people had different things because some of the yogis, and I won't mention names, would be asking mother, you know, what's the fate of the world? Will there be world yeah. peace and stuff? And I just wanted to know how to get to that state of permanent enlightenment, nirvana, and never have to return. Mm. And to just stay in that state, which she'd let me experience for a few days. And she'd be going back and forth and, uh, you know, talking about the experience. And sometimes as she talked, I would just become unable to speak or think as, as you know, many yogis would probably feel yeah. in the present. And she'd also talk about the hard work ahead. And she'd talk a lot about individuals mm. and, uh, and countries and, um, you know, the situation of Sahaj, she, she used to say a lot of things about her biological family, mm. uh, about, 
different countries, different leaders. And, you know, one just uh, listened and uh, yeah. tried not to respond because there was always, you know, this, um, you knew it, some of it was just testing you to see a reaction. Yes. Um, also, Shumatji could see the events and the future, isn't it? Oh, so yes. Whatever's unfolding so much, now. Uh, that, you know, what we might call telepathy was very common with mother. I would, and I mean, other yogis have spoken it. I would know that mother wants to see me and I would be living in Birmingham or Derby. Yes. And I would just hop in the car and drive down. I, I'd just yeah. leave work. Yeah. You know, give whatever excuse. I, I can't reveal too much in public. And um, <laughs> I'd be down and mother would say, oh, Bala, you've come. I was yeah. waiting for you. Mm. And so it's just uh, so remarkable how uh, you know, that whole connection is, uh, is uh, well, yeah. indescribable. So here's when the collective came in, uh, some of them anyway. Yeah. Is that Dania there? Yes, that's Dania. She came as a young girl. Yeah. And, um, her mother came first, very nice lady called Magda. Yes. And uh, she she started the Hampstead meetings. Mm -hmm. And Dania was this sweet young thing, and her brother also came. And, um, you know, she used to follow mother everywhere. I mean, she she has remained an angel throughout. Yes. Many of us have gone through trials at uh, different <laughs> times and changes and come back again, but she's uh, mm. she's been steadfast. Yeah. This I is another so. of the ladies from, uh, mm -hmm. from Derby. Oh, this is Dr. Matur on the bottom right, just the back of his head. Uh-huh. He, he was the leader of Delhi at the time. Right. And uh, at that time, Mother had, uh, had asked uh, two or three Delhi dealer, uh, leaders to come to Derby. Uh-huh. She said uh, it was a, at least they told me this, that it was a Paka Ashram. You should see a Paka Ashram. Well, it, it was so, quite... Quite how how mother wanted Shumatji wanted it to be, wasn't it? Like um, getting up at Brahma Bela for a meditation. Oh, yes, yes, yes. When when she you remind asked... us that again, please. Okay, Go so ahead. when she asked me to do the ashram, you know, for me it was easy at that time because I I <clears throat> I was very disciplined. Uh, nowadays I would struggle. Um, <laughs> so uh, she said, get up at four, um, shubi. Of course, you know, ablutions, shoe beat, and then you do a full puja in the morning. What do you and, mean um, a full puja? Like wash Mother's lotus feet? Or? Well, you wash Mother's feet. I mean, we didn't use the elements. Yes. Uh, we said mantra. She had the leader of India at the time. So this was in the 70s. Uh, Rajbhai Modi type up uh, the mantra. So I had that typewritten sheet and uh, read from it every morning so it lasted a long time an hour plus every yogi's taking that only about nine or ten i think uh would go and wash mother's feet and we were in bliss we, i just set a buzzer to to come out of it and go to work because she told me and told us we have to work because you could have stayed in that state seriously forever so um yeah and i had to wake them up so i got up earlier than four and woke everybody up. Not, I mean, some woke up themselves, but I would say about half had to be mm. woken up. And I'd go to bed after midnight because I was making the tape copies. So I had to, uh, yes. you know, do that after work in the evenings. Because you came home and we had another hour of meditation. We had dinner, you know, foot soak. I mean, it was, it was constant working, listening to mother's audio tapes. Um, and each of us took turns cooking once a week, so it was a it was a busy time, and somehow you know three or four hours sleep seemed not to be a problem. I, I didn't even fall asleep at work, which which was surprising. Mm. Um, so it was it was um, yeah it was a and all these yogis. I mean think of them. They're all you know we're all in our twenties, yes. including a couple with a young baby. Yeah. Uh, they were just as disciplined. You didn't have to ask them. Mm. So tell you, you think about it. To, uh, in Amazing. the last couple of decades, you know, mother, uh, well, you know, later on in years, mother had to keep scolding people, get up early, meditate. 
yeah you know, do this do that i can't be doing it for you but it was it was a yeah. a very tell dedicated us. group yeah tell us so it, it, it seems it sorry it seems there's sari here for shamataji and is that shamataji's suitcase next to the radiator yes uh, yes it is yeah. yeah and her little handbag which yes uh, ah. we yeah uh, of, I, I guess they call it a vanity bag, but vanity uh, okay. bag. Yes, that's right. Yeah, there was definitely no vanity. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so this Dr. Mathur was from Delhi. So mother sent him. Uh, well, he came with mother this time. Prior to that, we had uh, Mr. Dumal, who is to be the leader of Rahuri, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the one who told me what the experience I had during that enlightenment. Part of that experience, he said. Uh, was uh, an experience of the Adi Shakti herself. And I think mother had mentioned that to him because he had come from mother's house. So he had come from India. I, I think he stayed at mother's house and she told him he had to come to okay. Dabi Ashram and stay there for a while. Um, and then the third person who came was another leader of Delhi called Dr. Talva. Uh, his son does some singing or has been doing some singing and is that Sanjay Talwar you're talking yes, about? Yes, yes, that's his son. That's his son. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very good Bhajan Bhajan singer. Yes. 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 So Dr. Talwar came with his wife, very sweet lady, and he stayed in the ashram and I had to wake him up at 4 a.m. And it was interesting, you know, waking up someone old enough to be your dad. <laughs> 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 and getting him to come and sit down and um and he did it. I mean, he was really good. And, you know, he sit through the whole puja. And um, he uh, he came after this visit of mother's, of course. And his wife stayed there. And then later, mother told his daughter to come as well and his, and her husband, son-in-law. So it was an interesting time. They they were all coming in. And, uh, hmm. and the mother actually told me, and uh, I, I, well, I'm sure he won't mind now, um, mother said, you know, try and make him into a Saj yogi. He wasn't the leader at that time, by the way. He mm. he was still getting into Sahaj and, and right. learning about it. And he had so many questions. He was still mm. finding about finding out about the divinity of our guru. And uh, but you know, he, he was uh, he was fully into it. Very sweet man. Uh, one little thing he did do inadvertently was the bed that mother was sleeping on we we i offered it to him and he was quite a, a healthy man mm. and he sat on the edge of it and the bed collapsed wow <laughs> so it broke <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was the end of that bed which i had hoped to keep you know forever after Wow. Um, but no, it was it was very nice. They were very sweet, very nice. We have lots of photos of them at the ashram, which of course are, are not in this presentation. Yes. And they were they were very loving to the yogis. They were just looking after them. You know, his wife was making drinks and insisting on cooking for them. And yeah, uh, it was uh, just very loving, very loving couple. Just okay. one question. Is that a oh. new bed that you bought then? And then it's a new single bed. No, no, that's, that's my bed. That was the bed I that slept was on. Oh. That was the bed I slept on. And, you know, there, there are lots of, uh, well, I don't want to, things must have changed in later years. Uh, but I remember yogis saying, oh, you know, you mustn't sleep on the bed mother slept on. I don't know if you have heard that. Mm. Um, yeah. You have or not? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I have. I, I don't know anyone who slept in Shrimatji's bed. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I well, mean, they were asked to. They lay down with Shrimatji, but not sort of, yeah. you know, for for some time, but not as in day in and day out sleeping in oh, the yeah, yeah, bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wasn't that didn't seem to be an issue in yeah, even in the seventies. So I, I'll I'll just leave it at that. But I um, wouldn't yeah. think that should be real. Problem, no, it because that's yeah, the Mahamaya. Uh, She's the mother as well, isn't it? Exactly. So, I mean, all I can remember is very early on in in Tamworth, um, uh, that didn't seem to be a problem either in the seventies. Yeah. So, we and I mean, that because also, she, uh, just to just to, I mean, it's it's just Shrimatji showing her love for her children as the mother, isn't it? Because yeah. it's quite normal 
Uh, in India, especially where I come from, the children, you know, share the bed with the parents. I, I've done it even as a big grown up. I won't tell the age, you know, yeah. lying in between my parents' bed <laughs> and sleeping. And there's that whole feeling of, I can't, you can't put it into words. Exactly. It's like you're exactly. a child again and you're in this total blanket of love <laughs> that only your parents can give. Exactly. I think it's it's partly, if not entirely, the Western world and the warped minds and all the thinking that confused everybody. But you're right, absolutely. We were like children and we were treated like children and we thoroughly enjoyed it uh, in all that innocence and, you know, in our presence, yeah. even the guilty become innocent. So, And how lucky to just, be able to do that. Yeah, you know, it that... was, it was. Gosh. It was so, so different, yeah. So here's the back garden of uh, Dabi Ashram. As uh -huh. I said, it was very long, and a lot of the nice flowers you see are not my work. They were Bill. Bill Hansel was an avid gardener. He'd come and take care of everything. Uh -huh. And mother was interested in everything, all the flowers, all the plants. She was asking a lot of questions. Mm. Uh, this lady is one of the early yoginis in living there from uh -huh. Derby, Pat. Uh, she still lives near there. She came to a mother center to America for a while, and then she went back to England. Uh -huh. um, this is all sort What's of the name again. What was that? What's the name again of the lady? Uh, Pat. Pat. Patricia. Pat. Yes. Okay. Pat, uh, Pat Layden. Her last name is L E Y D O N Layden. And then this is uh, Joy. She was also living in the ashram. Oh, she, yes. had, she had a very interesting sense of humor. One day when it was her turn to cook, uh, she made a salad and um, we ate the salad and everyone was rushing to get water. And Joy <laughs> was laughing because she said, uh, she told us, oh, she chopped uh, fresh chilies and mixed them in with the uh, salad. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, they, we were all kids, you know, seriously. I mean, I was in my, well into my 20s, but <laughs> Mentally, we were. <laughs> <laughs> and she had a beautiful singing voice. She really uh -huh. did. When we sang for Mother um, uh, before she left for the station, uh, it was amazing. And uh, uh, But that's another story. All right. Uh -huh. So, um, and, and also, this lady, Rachel, had a good, a good voice. Uh-huh. Who stayed there? Okay. Uh, in fact, that's that's her son, Yaneshwara was his name. Oh. He's the little kid who mother said, you get him up also, and he has to be in the meditation room. That was the rule for all children. They wow. had to meditate. So the poor little fellow would sit there. And I remember one, uh, one morning, I had my eyes closed and I heard a thud. And I opened my eyes and poor little Yaneshwara had fallen over sideways asleep. <laughs> I used to feel, I actually used to feel bad, but, you know, it's, it obviously yes. was what it had to be, and that was that. Yeah. And, oh, yes, this is one of the yogis, Neil is his name, uh, uh, was Beverly's uh, husband. Mm -hmm. He also lived in the ashram. Okay. And that's mother asking me, was a bit surprised about, you know, who was doing the gardening. I think she pretty well knew that. Yes. I was going to designing with the brain and uh, rather than physical work. Although now I do love uh, working in the garden. Uh huh. Your hair's shorter there now. So. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's gradually got shorter and shorter over the years. But why the beard then? Was it saving time or some particular reason? Yeah, yeah just, I mean, basically. Um, I guess the least I had to do before going to work was the yeah. best, uh, which is why I never cut my hair or shaved when I was in college. It just seemed a waste of time and effort. And uh, <laughs> so it was unbalanced, you know, people, uh, especially ladies who saw it would say, oh, one side is longer than the other. And I'd say, yeah, I support my hair on one side. And that's why it is. It's never been trimmed. <laughs> 
But the only reason I cut my hair the first time before I met mother was I couldn't get a place to rent when I went to a nice neighborhood in London. They thought I was some hippie and I wasn't, you know. Yeah. I hadn't done all those things. It was just, uh, I guess people would say lethargy or laziness or whatever, but just seemed totally unnecessary to, to get a haircut. Mm -hmm. And here's the mother. The lovely photo there. of Shramata G there. Yeah, oh, so nice. So yeah, nice. With some of the plants at the back. And the beans are growing up the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, we used to have, uh, we celebrate Christmas in a big way at Darby Ashram. Uh -huh. and we had a live Christmas tree, which um, Bill Hansel was a big, strong man, mm -hmm. would bring from the garden, dig it up carefully, put it in a pot, bring it inside, we decorate it, and then after Christmas, he'd take it out and replant it, and that tree survived. Amazing. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, so we had our live tree, and you know how wonderful Christmas trees um, smell indoors. We still keep oh, that tradition. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And still the back garden. And this is Royal Crown Derby. When during the week, mother was in Derby. Yes. You may know it's very famous pottery. We've seen the video. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the Maori pattern, which is, is the one mother really liked, which is this really yeah. interesting, beautiful pattern. Mm. And she was shopping, and uh, this is one of the yoginis there, and another from, from Derby. Mm -hmm. And that's Pat there. So she was choosing all this, um, all this china there. Amazing. And I know uh, after marriage, uh, Rajni got something similar. Uh, only for mother, so we bought it so we could serve mother on it when she came. Uh -huh. And this is another view with some more of the yogis. And that again is uh, the Delhi leader, who actually got me into trouble, I should tell you, uh, because um, at the end of, um, I'm in a very sweet way, so at the end of um, mother's visit, on the last day when she had to leave, um, we were sitting... Uh, downstairs and uh, mother asked uh, one of the yogis said that i had i'd composed some songs for mother and mother said oh sing sing them to me and went, and i had i should tell you i didn't really compose them it's just that one day i heard a song on the radio coming back from rolls royce um called woodstock i don't know if you've heard that song uh yeah no it rings a bell please elaborate it's uh, it, uh, I think Jody Mitchell sang it originally, mm -hmm. and uh, the words just moved me as I was driving driving home about the seekers, and so I came back and I sat on my floor. Oh, by the way, I didn't have carpet, so I still remember it was just a wooden floor. Uh -huh. I started strumming my guitar and I sang this song, and um, I used to sing it a few times later. And one of the yogis overheard it when my door was shut and wanted to learn it and we started practicing. So anyway, we sang the song and a couple of others for mother. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, mother said, the vibrations are so strong. She said, I can't move. Wow. And she said, uh, it's like a puja. So we, she sat there. And um, after a while, uh, the, the people who were supposed to get to London were getting anxious. And uh, so we eventually headed out to the car and we got to the station, and uh, mother had just missed the train. I... And I was like, my heart just sank. And uh, so Dr. Mathur turns and says, look at that. He said, first time mother's missed a train. And he said, uh, Sri Mashji missed a train for Bala. And I'm like, it's not for Bala. She was listening to the collective singing. <laughs> You know, singing a song with all their hearts, and they were beautiful singers. I pointed out two of those who had such wonderful voices. And I thought, and it, you know, at that time, thought went through my head, this is not good. You don't say that, such a thing in public. So anyway, mother was laughing and saying, that's all right. You know, I meant to spend more time with you. And all the yogis were happy because we got to spend more time. And we just stood at the train station. Yes. Uh, bring them to London trains were frequent. 
and end on time usually, <laughs> unlike today and uh, these days. And, um, you know, so we spent a lot of time with mother and uh, the train came and mother left. Um, so I I'll tell you why. Year, uh, years later, when I was on an India tour, actually not years later, pretty soon after, I was on an India tour and I had been, everyone was on the buses, but I'd been given a car ride Right. But a very caught up yogi, but he had rented a car and it was convenient. So I went, I thought, oh, you know, I'll get a ride with him. So I drove all the way. I think it was a couple of hours. It was a long drive. And I was staying with mother on that tour again. So uh, we went to where mother was staying and she and Dr. Mathu was, were in a room. Mm -hmm. So I walk into the room and uh, mother looks up at me and she said, what happened? You're so caught up. Look at your agya. Oh. And obviously I was with this guy who was, you know, yeah. uh, who was supposed to be avoided, but wanting a comfy ride, I had given in and gone with him. Oh. So she said, look in the mirror. So I turned around. So my back is to mother and there's this huge mirror, uh, you know, on the, on the ground because this is India. So it was just a big mirror mm. resting on the ground. I look in the mirror at my agya. Then I look at mother and mother is smiling away and mm. she turns to and nudges Dr. Matu and smiles and shakes her head at him like, look, I'm making fun of him. <laughs> it's like Buddha <laughs> and, You know, I mean, and I turned around, I thought, this is my punishment. I immediately remembered what he said yeah. at the train station and she was showing him that, no, nobody is special, you know. Look, he's got his anger caught up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I can tell you I was devastated because she had never said anything like that mm. before to me yeah felt a bit of turmoil till the next morning when mm. I woke up and went to her room and she was like oh you know it was, everything was back to normal right That's much relief there yeah <laughs> <laughs> I realized that was a lesson you know but yes. sometimes you can't help it it's other people say things Yes. Well, like Greg, Greg I used to say, they always put you on a pedestal and then you get it kicked out from under you and you get injured as you hit the floor with a hard bang. Mm. <laughs> so, were, you um, sent to, were you sent to... Okay, this is still Dabi Ashram? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is us leaving. That's Gavin, who was the leader uh -huh. of England. Um that's um, his daughter, a very sweet girl. Uh, this is Patty Pro, who was oh, married yes. to yeah. David Pro. Yeah. Um, very nice lady. And David Pro was uh, such a humorous man. Lots of jokes all the time. Yeah, That's... we interviewed them, I think, way back 20. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, it's real, you know, real hardcore seekers. It's just a shame that he ended up in TM. But, you know, so that's what happened to many of the genuine seekers they were just looking so hard and yes uh, and this is uh, she's still in Sahaj Rachel you you won't recognize her uh, like many of us have changed a lot yes um, so about to get into my old uh, tiny Volkswagen Polo and this is my in my car uh, as I was driving she was just laughing and talking to me about things I didn't take the photo of course it was the yeah. person sitting behind me <laughs> amazing <laughs> just a little safety notice about taking photos what was it like driving the Adi Shakti you know it was it was quite uh, you know the thing is that you're already in that state in that deep bubble mm. and um, it's, it's all like a, a very vivid deep dream Mm. which is intensely joyful and uh, the source of all that joy and love is you know manifesting in a human body yeah. next to you uh, it, it, you know it, it's beyond words but it, it's the number of times i've driven her, especially when i drove her in a tiny Celica gts sports car and you know years later everybody said you need to have a big mercedes for Yes. Mother to sit in. Yes. But, you know, when I picked her mother up in since uh, in Birmingham when mother first came in '78, I, I did not. I did not own a car. I was taking the bus everywhere, 
So I had to ask this quality inspector who worked uh, not for me directly, but you know, under my uh, engineering, uh, mm. uh, I guess, uh, department, uh, yeah. uh, if she would give a ride, I said, you know, my, my spiritual teacher is coming. Uh, can you give us a ride? So she had a mini, mm -hmm. a mini, which in 1978 was really mini. And then I just came and sat in that tiny front seat. Amazing. And I was squished in the back behind mother, talking yeah. to her. And I don't, I'm not sure if I said this, told you this in the last uh, video, but this woman was a chain smoker, right? And I told her, you cannot smoke yeah. in the car when you're near her. And she had a terrible vishuddhi. I used to cough whenever I had to go down to the factory and talk to her as soon as she began speaking. So mother is talking to her, of course, and she asks her to hold a hand out. She had one hand on the steering wheel. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she asked her, what do you feel? And, and this woman said, I feel a cool wind, she said. It's just blowing into my hand and blowing into my body. Oh. And I was thinking, smoker, bad vishuddhi? <laughs> I'm sitting at the back. And so she asks mother, she actually said to mother, uh, being a quality inspector, you know, she was quite analytical. And she said, um, I'm not interested in this. She said, why am I feeling it? And very sweetly, mother said, because you are blessed. Oh, wow. Simple as that. I mean, it is. And she never tried meditation or came. A lot of people from the factory came. Uh, some of the ladies in assembly, in the assembly area, when I used to walk around, just checking everything was working. Um, one of them, her name is Marge, she... She said to me, you know, the ladies wanted me to tell you that when you walk behind us, we feel less stressed about our jobs. And I thought, oh, what's, I couldn't quite comprehend. So the next time I thought, oh, must be vibrations. Yeah. So I told her it's because I meditate. Uh, I said, maybe it's because I meditate. And she started coming for meditation, told some of the other factory workers. Wow. And a small group of them started, started coming to my flat. Uh, for the meditation sessions wow. in, in 78, uh, 79 time period. Wow. So it's just remarkable how mother, you know, was working through us on people who weren't even consciously seeking. There was, there was one man who was a manager there, uh, who was one of those public school boys. And he came and he had such a strong experience. And he told me it felt like when he went mountain climbing, Mm -hmm. And he got to the peak and sat alone. He used to go alone. Mm -hmm. And he said, suddenly, the, he would, it was just the awesomeness of nature. Yeah. Would throw him into this silent state. And, you know, it was another world. And he said, that's what this meditation in front of a photograph wow. was doing for him. So it's, uh, you know, the way it works is just... Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you have no way how... You have no, no idea how it works. The most uh, unexpected people, uh, even for, uh, uh, I'll go to some other slides here. Uh, so this is mother on the train. I actually used to try and travel with mother on the train when she mm -hmm. went back and so on. Uh, Beautiful. Now I'm, I'm jumping forward to the India tour of 1982. Okay which was my India tour, oh. uh, my first one, after a lot of persuasion over many years by mother. Yes. And, um, this is how people were greeted. When they arrived, mother had already pre-arranged saris for the ladies, uh -huh. kurtas for the men, and then all the ladies would come and um, they would choose their saris. Amazing. The guys would choose kurtas. I mean, for us, I think it was all white kurtas anyway, which was much easier. So, so that's how um, it would start. Wow. And here is mother actually buying saris in India. Um, I was staying with her then. I was lucky the first tour because mother allowed me to stay in her room with uh -huh. her. So uh -huh. every city we went to, I traveled with mother in her car uh, and Rao Bai, who was looking after her. And uh, I would then sleep in the same room. So it was Rao Bai, mother and me. Oh, and, wow. um so uh, when mother was getting ready for bed after all the meetings and programs, 
uh, Radha would just tell me, close your eyes, I'd close my eyes. And then after mother was changed for bed, uh, Radha would say, okay, open your eyes, and I'd open my eyes. And then I'd lie down on a little bed in the corner. And so the three of us would be in the room. And then in the morning when mother had to change, mother would get up, we'd have tea and all that. Uh -huh. And yogis, would, uh, Indian yogis would bring that in. And then mother would say, close your eyes. And, you know, mother would get ready for the day. <laughs> it was just um, a completely different, uh, different oh, life. It was, it was so enjoyable. And we'd go to each center. And then after every program, you know, mother would come back and say, oh, take the vibrations out of me and, so we got a chance to be, you know, holding the arms or legs of this divine body and wow. in vibrations like you just never thought, you know, you could. And, and I'm sure the old, I haven't watched all the old interviews I've done, but, you know, the old yogis uh, from the 70s would have told you, you know, you'd, you'd put one hand on like mother's shoulder and then yes. give vibrations uh, to the collective, whether it was at a seminar or a, yeah. A big event or whatever and uh, things like that. Uh, I remember she'd she'd hold she'd hold your Vishudi finger. Yes. With this finger and stick it on the middle of a forehead and you'd feel mother's forehead literally sucking it in like there was some kind of a hollow pulling it. You could feel it pulling. And then you point your other hand at people and you feel uh, or at the collective and you'd feel the vibrations flowing out. It was yeah. uh, it was a completely different time. And then occasionally when I'd go from a busy week at Rolls Royce and go to her and say, oh, you know, my head, all this design work, and she'd just stick her Vishuddhi, uh, her Agya finger in the middle of my forehead and that's it. That we know it was instantaneous. Not just Do you find cool. yourself, sorry. Do you find yourself tapping into that memory when Trimataji would put her agya finger on your agya and then you even now feel it's played out? I do. I yeah. do. I mean, if it's not for those memories, you know, I would have probably left this body long ago. It's what keeps me going. Wow. Because living in America and putting up with, you know, things that go on and... Uh, Mm. You know, it, it's very difficult when you, when you know reality, absolute reality. Yes. And uh, you have to still, and we are not in, you know, by the remotest chance, even a, a, a minute fraction of the divinity that mother is. Mm. So she could put up with it, although occasionally you've heard her say how, you know, it troubled her body. I remember one puja in the 70s at uh, the Temple of All Faiths in London. Mm. And, suddenly, and there were only like a dozen of us there. And Mother suddenly said, you all should meditate. You know, she said, it's like scorpions running out of you and biting my feet. Wow. That was something something to hear. and Because uh, many, many were still having difficulty uh, mm -hmm. clearing out uh, a lot of the catches and, and uh, doing the discipline. The mother would call the uh, the Finchley Ashram sometimes when I was staying there at weekends, and uh, you know one of them would get a scolding. I remember once I was there, and uh, uh, Christine, whom I showed you earlier in the photo, mm -hmm. got the call, and then she was sobbing, and she hangs up and said, "She must, she is angry with us for not getting up early to meditate." And obviously, the next day everybody gets up yeah. early and meditates and stuff like that, but. It was just like dealing with, you know, children who needed to be yeah. told and uh, encouraged just about every day. Oh, gosh, yeah. Is that Uncle Douglas in that photo at all? Here? In, uh, in oh, uh, actually, he was back in the Derby one. It was a, uh, no, in the Tamworth one. Oh. There was a photo of his back. He was working oh. on the... Uh, uh, no, here it's just me and mother because I was traveling with her uh, in the sari shop. Oh, and the Indian leader whose name is uh, 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 Rajbhai Modi, the first leader. Oh, I thought there was one more with him, but uh, no, there isn't. Yeah. Oh, the buses. And these were the uh, the dreaded buses you traveled in. Uh, yes. You probably were kept. They would say, get in the bus at 5 a.m. and at 6.30 a.m. nothing had moved. Wow. Uh, you know, they were either looking for the driver or for the attendant or something. <laughs> um, 
but that first year was fine because I was in mother's car. The second year, half of it, my second year tour, half of it with, was with mother and suddenly I had to grow up and uh, she said, you should now go and enjoy the collective. <laughs> <laughs> and the story. I, had go, I had to go and join them. And, and that was also a different type of enjoyment, yes. which was, and I got to know uh, many of the foreign yogis better when you're out there yes. with the collective. So here's one of the pujas. Uh, so as I said, this, this year, 82, I was with mother. So I'd arrive at the puja location with mother. And often the Indian yogis had it pretty much ready. Mm. But mother had to wait for the uh, Western yogis who were traveling by bus. And as I said, the buses are always late. Sometimes they break yeah. down. Drivers would stop. You know, the drivers were not yogis. So they would stop for something or the other. Yeah. So sometimes mother would be waiting for an hour. Uh, which is good for me because you know I could sit and meditate and and watch mother and enjoy and and the Indian yogis who would be there there used to be quite a few uh, there are some some of the yogis. Is this the puja in Brahmapuri at all? In where? Brahmapuri. It could be. I I haven't. I'll have to go find my albums and. Okay. I was just grabbing everything. That's very nice. Next it's, time will be more. Yeah, it's beautiful. We'll have more data. Wow. This photo I was told to share with the leaders. I took this while mother was waiting. You can see the towel on her. Yeah. They so first washed mother's feet, and then uh, the puja process would begin when she wore her puja sari. And mother said, she just said to me when I showed it to her later after it was developed. She said, this has captured my innocence. Mm. And uh, I was, I, I gave it to people who felt, you know, they had difficulty clearing a particular chakra out or, or, or just if they wanted, you know, the feeling of this. Because yeah. there was no puja yet, the, the group hadn't come, and she was just sitting there gazing, and I went in front of her and uh, took this photo. Amazing. Again and again. And this was after the puja, that, that same time. Beautiful. And then this is Singapore. So when Mother found out I was born in Singapore, she said we should start Saji Yoga there. Hmm. Um, so she first tried to, to have meetings um, prior to this program. Uh, through a person who worked in the shipping corporation who was one of uh, CP's, uh, well, you know, junior to CP, but knew him professionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Singapore, there, were, there was a law that said gurus are not allowed because they'd seen what a lot of fake gurus were doing in the West. So in the early 80s, mm -hmm. gurus were banned. So it had to be done uh, under the radar, so to speak. Uh, so she was able to do a program privately at some location, this uh, shipping corporation guy put together. But uh -huh. this year, uh, we were able to get the uh, Ganesha temple in a street called Ceylon Road. So, so my ancestors, if you go back four or five generations, uh, come from Ceylon. Uh -huh. um, they have a history of about 3,000 years there. And of course, like many people want to claim, they claim they are descendants of uh, Lord Rama when he crossed over. Um, that, you know, is what they say. Anyway, so mother wanted uh, to come and have a program. So my father used to be one of the who's who, I guess, at that time in the community. And uh, so we, um, we were able to get this temple, which he was involved with. And uh, they allowed us to do a program then. Mother did a public program. Wow. Uh, interestingly, you know, Ganesha Temple establishing yes. Sahaj in Singapore. Mm. And, um, and then the meetings used to be held in our house. Um, and my brother and my mom uh -huh. used to be on the first Sahaj meeting, Yoga meetings in, uh, in Singapore. And then so years was... later, uh, 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 a yogi from America went there for, I think, for work. And you know, continued it or restarted it, whatever the case may be. So obviously, this this was after your your 
biological mother had met Srimataji in Tamworth. Yes, yes. So you saw the yeah. So she'd met her in Tamworth. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, she'd seen her earlier as well. Even my brother had had been to her in the it's late seventies uh -huh. in England. He he'd come there for his studies, and uh, but at that time he didn't feel much and. You know, mother was saying, oh, you're, you know, she told me, oh, he's a very good man, but he thinks too much, you know, he can't feel it. Uh, but he's very spiritual as well, as I think many of our uh, family members and people from that time were. Uh, so this is some of the group there in the temple. I took these photos a bit later because not everybody stayed to get their realization. You know, uh, these people are Hindus, of course. It's a Hindu temple. And um, when you start saying, you know, things about Ganesha and uh, so on, and when yogis inadvertently say, you know, she is Sri Ganesha's <laughs> mother, people pass out because, you know, Ganesha is purity and innocence and you don't have uh, married ladies uh, being gurus. Um, so anyway, it was a good time. Um, Masha used to come and stay in my mom's house uh, for a week at a time or more whenever she came to Singapore in subsequent years to do programs or as a base before uh, she went to Malaysia. And this is at the airport with my mom and brother on one of the trips, one of those first trips when she was leaving uh, at... Uh, Singapore airport. And she looks rather pensive there. So now we have switched back to England. But just a little thing for, for Singapore. And then we also helped to set up uh, Malaysia, which, uh, which also became uh, a good center there. It was a bit difficult because it's uh, officially a Muslim country. So uh, we had to tread a little carefully. Uh, this one is a Diwali Puja, again at the Temple of All Face, that old place with the uh, cement floor and so on. I think by, by this time they had put down rugs and carpets. And much That's bigger. That's quite amazing because they're the uh, pujas. Uh, were much longer then, isn't it, compared to how it was in the ashram, the earlier pujas that you'd shown? Yes, yes, and uh, and and sitting in quiet meditation was the longest, especially yeah. the ones before this one, which you're seeing, where they were just in a ten or a dozen or whatever yeah. of us, fifteen maybe. Uh, we would just sit for for a long time. It wasn't difficult because you were in that that yeah. blissful state. I think the physical presence of mother made so much difference. Oh, absolutely. Transported elsewhere. Which is which is why I was saying, you know, the yogis who have come without seeing mother physically. Yeah. I mean, my belief, I mean, I'm just basing it on my logical mind. They have to be so amazing, yeah. and sensitive to feel it and get into it. Yeah. These are the Derby and uh, Birmingham ladies um, who were invited to do the Devi Puja. Uh -huh. And that's them continuing. Wow. And like this lady on the right came quite late in the bluish with a husband, quite an elderly couple. Mm -hmm. They just experienced it so quickly. Can you imagine? I mean, you know, you're nearing 70, and then what you've been thinking about for decades, you yeah. suddenly find it. Yeah. OK, now we're in Zermatt a few years later. Uh, you might have heard of uh, uh, the, uh, I think it was in 84. There was a big seminar and a puja done there. The, this is all the collective there with the mountains in the background. 
and that's uh, Mother and Me um, at Zermatt. At, at this, uh, at this uh, seminar, we had some very uh, interesting times. Uh, uh, one of them, I think I might have mentioned here already, um, we were staying uh, in the adjoining room across from Mother's room. That's me, Gregoire, and I think another uh, one or two yogis. And in the morning, early morning, I heard Mother calling aloud, uh, come, come, come. And uh, we were still in our pajama bottoms and sleeveless T-shirts. And Greg, I was like, oh, I got to get dressed. So I just ran into mother's room. Um, and the mother said, come, look at the sunrise. And so uh, she, she showed me out of, she had this huge window, mm -hmm. picture window. And the sun was just rising. And the top of Zermatt was covered in this beautiful wow. golden red hue. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you're standing bare feet there. Yes, yes. Shumataji. Yes. Shumataji also bare feet, isn't it? Yeah, barefoot and vibrate. She's vibrating it, obviously. This is also quite high up, well above ground level. Yeah. Uh, but next to the Matterhorn, everything looks lower. Yeah. And... Um, so what time of the morning was that? It was about 5, 6 a.m.? Uh, the actual sunrise was very early in the morning, mm, yeah. Okay. But this was this was a bit later. Yeah, because later on in the day, perhaps Shrimataji is wearing that red sari and she doesn't have that shawl. Yeah, she yeah. This, this, is late. This, is, this is quite a bit later when Mother was doing something in the kitchen uh -huh. centre and then she came into the backyard. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I had a photo of the, of the actual sun coming over... Zone that, but it appears appears to have disappeared anyway. Okay, so now we're back in Europe. Uh, well, we're still in Europe. Uh -huh. and, uh, there's the uh, the little bag of mother's uh, somebody's carrying, and that of course is the young Gregoire. Uh -huh. uh, we were very close in those days. Um, yeah, had, had some good times together. Mother would make fun of us because she'd say, "Look at these two intellectuals," uh -huh. and. You know, in South Yoga, intellectual is not a word of praise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there, that summarizes it. But we, enjoyed, we enjoyed each other's company. Wow. Was there an India exhibition um, that you wanted to talk about where Mother foretold something or shared a, some incident? Yes, of okay. So, um, um, oh, do you think we can pause the uh, recording for a moment? Yeah. Okay. Just one moment. Thank you, Uncle. Let's, let's start again after our little pause. So oh, you met okay. Shramataji in December 1984? Yes. So on, on all the tours, you know, Mother would be just uh, sitting and chatting with us and laughing about all the silly things that go on and, you know, how humorous she was. And I guess she had to keep showing that humor because we were, we were probably got quite frightened at our... And how backward we really were vibrationally. <laughs> but I think, uh, as, as we discussed earlier, this might be a good point to, to stop, and then we could uh, continue in, a, in another video. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. Uh, any particular humorous incident that you can recollect in this particular occasion all right so, so she this this particular run uh, <laughs> she was laughing at at uh, some of the things that some of the western yogis had done um, I, you may have heard it on talk, in talks where some ladies from uh, america you know we used to be told not to bring too much luggage and i remember yeah. carrying this small bag for my tour and um uh, you get there and you see 
yogis from America coming with massive heavy suitcases. <laughs> and someone just reported to to mother that one lady had brought her curling irons with her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know such things existed, by the way. I mean, <laughs> no one in my family had used that. And, you know, they had, and of course, the, the complaint was it did not work on the Indian voltage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so, I know, you, you, can, you can think about, you know, talking about going from the sublime to the mundane. <laughs> gosh, yes. Amazing. <laughs> But uh, it was, you know, a lot of it is joy and mother's humor that I think kept many, many people in Saj Yoga. It's amazing stories and, and the photos that you've shared uh, this evening, Uncle. Thank you so much. Well, thank um, you so much for, for getting me to pull these out. I mean, seriously, many of them were dusty. In fact, Rajni had to go with a feather duster and clean out the box before I opened it in case I started sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are a little sensitive, you know, to to thirty or forty year old dusts. So. <laughs> Amazing, and and what treasure! Yes, I, 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 we really realize that. In fact, my older daughter Priya said uh, uh, that we have to digitize all this so that the collective can have whatever. I mean, uh, not necessarily anything that has me, but the ones that have mother in different situations, I think is, is, is yes, just, you know, be, there's already a huge collection and yes. I never thought of it because there were so many photos, but yes. maybe there are some here that show mother, you know, in, in, in different situations and different yeah. aspects that, that would be nice if the collective wanted some of them. Oh, that would be awesome. I think uh, it would be, it would definitely be very, very good. Uh, not just for the present, but for the future generations as well. Future. So very um, apt suggestion from Priya, if I may say so. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you, Uncle. We will conclude this session for now and okay. regroup. Okay, so thank, well, thank you, you so much. Time. Thank you. And thank you, Shimataji, for these beautiful memories. We can just yes. close our eyes or just not look just at you and look to and then... For us still being alive and able to yeah, yeah to share her moments yes thank you talk to you soon thank you Joshua, thank mm -hmm. you bye bye very much.